Okay, so let's go with the first comment that I received. Here's uh, one individual who, one uh, visitor who says, uh, isn't an observer always implicit, uh, no matter how much it is denied? How can you kill the observer? You know, in science, I'm um, saying that you have to kill the observer. Why? Because the observer brings in uh, subjectivity, okay? Okay, there are several contexts that need to be addressed here. And uh, I just uh, listed a couple, and they go something like this. If I can get it there. And uh, these are the contexts. If I can get this thing, okay. Uh, what is uh, that we have to contrast defining versus sensing or perceiving, okay? People have this notion that everything needs to be perceived, sensed, uh, especially with the senses, right? And that's not the case. What that does is introduce subjectivity, okay? And specifically in the two important words of physics that form the foundations of physics, and that's object and exist. And people think, have this notion that an object is that which you can touch or see. And they also believe that existence, that which exists, is also that which you can touch or see. So they have, throughout the centuries, equated object or a thing, right, with existence. They think they're synonyms. They can't see any difference between these two words. And that's why we have to step in and erase all that, throw it in the trash can. No good. No, we have to get rid of the senses. You have to define the word object. You have to define the word exist. You have to define them crisply. You have to define them rigorously so that you can use them consistently, rationally, scientifically. Okay? And yet we define an object as that which has shape and existence as an object that has location. What the word exist adds to a thing, an object, is location. Uh, and that's why, you know, uh, we get rid of the senses because that's very subjective. Uh, especially when you're defining, when, when you're creating these words as the foundations for physics, for science. Then you have the issue of assumption versus knowledge and proof, okay? Um, do particles exist? Are there particles out there? Uh, does space-time exist? Is there such a thing as space-time? Does God exist? Is there such a thing as God? Well, if you ask all these experts out there, they'll say, yeah, particles have been proven. We know they exist. We know space-time exists and it is warped and that's what gravity is and so on. They know everything. And so the, the issue here is that, uh, you know, in science we do not know and we do not prove. That's a word of religion. Both those words, knowledge and belief and uh, proof. Because uh, knowledge is belief. That's all it is. You're, what you know for sure you know, I know to be a lie. <laughs> so you know it to be a fact, I know it to be a lie. You know it to be the truth, I know it to be the lie. And uh, so no, we, we don't say that God exists, and we don't say that God doesn't exist like the atheists do. We say, let us assume that God exists. And now we can proceed to tell a theory based on that assumption. So now you can follow my train of thought. But to say that God does not exist or God exists, all you're doing is giving your opinion, okay? And we don't care about opinions in science. That's religion, okay? Okay, and then there's the issue of explain versus observe, okay? And, uh, you know, people say, well, don't you need to observe a phenomenon before you can explain it? That's their reasoning. That's what they've been taught by the mathematical physicists, so-called physicists. They're just mathematicians. They know nothing about physics. And what these people say is, you know, you have to measure. And of course, if you've got to measure, well, then you apparently need, are going to need the eyes at least, maybe your hands, right? So they say, see, you need to observe. And they bring the observer in. And then it turns out the observer, you know, is like a witness, uh, 
uh, uh, in a trial, he starts uh, giving testimony, personal testimony. Well, we don't do that in science. And, uh, and so what's the issue? Yeah, we have to kill the observer like in the mafia. You shoot him down. No witnesses. Has uh, Stephen Hawking, when he was alive, did he ever see a black hole out there in space? I mean, you know. <laughs> did he ever see a black hole? Uh, did he touch a black hole? Did he smell one? Did he taste one? Did he hear one? No. That, does that mean he cannot theorize and say, let us assume that there is such a thing as a black hole? And now here's the equation. I can explain based on that, you know, why this star goes around allegedly nothing. It doesn't mean you have to believe his theory. It just means you can follow his train of thought because he makes an assumption. He makes an assumption that there is such a thing as a black hole. He doesn't need to see one. He doesn't need to touch one. So this notion that, that we have that observation is the first step of the scientific method and, of course, it's part of philosophy, according to many. That's, that's, uh, that comes from the religious folk, from mathematicians and, uh, and priests and other astrologers, you know, alchemists. Those people talk about observing and, and that you need to philosophize. You need to have a way of thinking or whatever you want to call it before you start a discipline. It's not true has nothing to do with science okay so we do not observe and it is not the first step of the scientific method so it's this uh, obsession that people have because they've been educated that way uh, that you need to observe that you need to somehow see touch and uh, feel and whatever you know a blind man can be and a deaf man can be scientist for sure okay